welcome once again to an update on the coronavirus and some interesting new facts that I want to discuss today. I'm Dr. Scott Berger from Dr. Luke on Call. Today, I want to look at three things. Number one, we've got to talk about a little bit of an update on the numbers that are increasing that we see in, uh, in our country. And we also see a certain pattern across the world in certain countries as the numbers come down in other countries that have already had the virus a little bit longer than we have. Secondly, we need to talk about the main point today, and that is blood clotting risk. We definitely have an increased risk of blood clotting if the disease progresses past a certain time um, in your body, especially past five to seven days. We do see that, and that is a, an area that we need to um, think about and understand why it's there and also take the necessary precaution to treat that and prevent that from happening. And then thirdly, I want to talk to you a little bit about what happens in the hospital if you want to go uh, work there, if what do we as healthcare workers go through. And I'll show you some pictures of what I have to wear at the moment when I go out, help out in a rehab unit or if I go to theatre and um, in the hospitals. Just to show you that the protocols in the hospitals are very strict and um, they take a lot of precautions not to spread the virus and treat patients appropriately and with the necessary um, care, respect, and prevention. Okay, let's start. Firstly, if we talk about the numbers, it's important to know and to see that as our lockdown has now been eased to level four, um, we have more movement and we have more contact. And we can also definitely see that the numbers are increasing, around about, you know, between 200 and 400 new cases per day. Whereas, if you remember correctly, just a few weeks ago, if we had 100 cases a day, we would have thought, whoa, that's a lot. Remember the first case we had? Remember when it was six and 10 and 20 and 30? And we got our first 100 cases, when we got the first 1,000 cases? Now, you know, we're looking at 300, 400 per day, so it's 1,000 cases almost every three days. And that's sort of the pattern we see across the world. And remember also, we are testing more to try and pick up clusters of areas where there are more spread. So the more we test, like we see in the Western Cape, the numbers are much higher because there's a, a high number of um, testing that's been done in the Western Cape. We're also seeing across the world that there's a high percentage of people that have already got antibodies that are already um, positive for the, from the virus and they've never really had symptoms. So it looks like the numbers, the actual numbers are much, much higher than the official numbers, which has a very important consequence and that is that the mortality rate is much lower it's not the initial two to three percent mortality rate looks much more like the south korean numbers that we talked about right in the beginning that looked at 0.5 percent are probably even lower than that still the risk is with the cardiovascular disease patients diabetics immune compromised and our older patients and the reason is not just in the lungs and um, that leads us to the second point of the day and the most important point, and that is increased blood clotting. Let's go back a little bit to the cell and what cell gets affected and what the virus does and why does the virus infect the cell. We spoke about the virus entering in a cell in the lung, the type two pneumocyte. Why? Because the cell in the lung had a receptor it's like a, a lock and a key. The virus has got a key and the cell has got a lock and it's got to be able to open it. And that lock is called the ACE2 receptor. Okay, so we had ACE2 receptors in the lung on the inside of the alveoli. The virus came in there and it affected the lung and you had dry cough and you know difficulty in breathing and it could lead to further lung problems. But then we started seeing other organs getting affected. So once the virus got into the lung, and it got into the bloodstream, into the blood vessels, we started seeing other complications. Liver complications, kidney complications, and we started seeing blood clotting problems, strokes in younger patients, cardiac symptoms in, in cases where they had cardiac problems, cardiac arrests, blood clots in the coronary arteries. And the question was, why does that happen? Well, it seems to be that the reason for this is the ACE2 receptor that also happens to be on the endothelial cell inside the blood vessels. Now, where is this? So this is your blood vessel. If you take a cross section on a blood vessel, okay, this is the lumen, the inside. 
This is the walls of the blood vessel. And the walls of the blood vessel has got these little cells called endothelium cells. Okay. They line the inside of the blood vessel. This is the muscle surrounding the blood vessel so that the blood vessel can contract and also can dilate. The virus then enters the blood vessel because it came in through the lungs. It also has a receptor, the ACE2, like we saw in the lung on the type 2 pneumocyte. So the virus can connect there and it can now damage this endothelial cell. So if you have someone that's got a chronic disease of blood vessel problems, like we get in our hypertensive, in our chronics, in our smokers, in our diabetics, and in the older patients with um, long-standing issues with their blood vessels, they are definitely more at risk because these cells are damaged. And if you add the virus to that, it causes damage to that area. It causes a whole biochemical reaction with oxygen and creates free radical oxygens, super oxygen, but it does bind to the ACE2 receptor on the inside of the blood vessels. This then damages them. And here comes the very interesting thing. Right on the inside of these endothelial cells, you get a thing called von Willebrand's factor. That's a very important thing that we have in our bodies to help blood clot faster. Why? Because if there's damage to the blood vessel, you don't want it to bleed and you lose a whole lot of blood. So the von Willebrand's factor sits around this inside of the blood vessel and it almost looks for openings and damages to the endothelium. As soon as there's damage, the von Willebrand factor gets released into this uh, lumen, into the opening of the blood vessel, and it connects with the platelets, your blood platelets, and it forms a blood clot to close the damaged area. The problem is we don't have a cut in the blood vessel with just one damaged area. We have got damaged cells all through the body because of the virus. So they have seen in studies that, specifically in one patient, that the von Willebrand's factor increased by more than 500%, which makes the patient a lot more clottable. So the blood clots a lot easier. That also has a whole ripple effect to your liver where your other blood clotting factors reside. So that really changes the clotting ability of the body. And if the clotting ability of the body becomes so much more, then it can affect the blood vessels in the brain, in the heart, in the kidneys, in the liver, and many other places that can cause problems with oxygen flow and problems with blood flow. So that's why we are now using a test called a D-dimer. And a D-dimer is a test that can be done to look at your overall clotting ability. Now you're not gonna do that at the beginning when you feel bad because remember then it's mainly in the airway in the lung and you want the diagnosis, you still wanna stay home, you want to isolate, take your vitamin C, vitamin D, your zinc, get enough rest, get enough sleep, which is really important. All those normal things we spoke about, but as the disease progresses, especially if you're an older person and if you're cardiac risk, then at the end of the first week, you should consult with your doctor and maybe consider doing a D-dimer test because that will give you an indication if your clotting profile is normal or not normal. Now, please remember this is not really relevant for the children. We are all worried about our children. We want to know what's going to happen with the children. Children generally have very, very healthy endothelium cells and blood vessels. They haven't got a long smoking history. They're not long-term diabetics, long-term cholesterol problems, long-term blood pressure problems. So they're generally very healthy as far as their vascular system concerns. So they don't really get a huge issue with this. As we said in the previous videos with a pediatrician as well, very low risk in the children. So that is the summary on, on um, blood clotting. And important to just know about that, especially if you're sick for longer than a week, to maybe speak to your doctor, to your GP, to whoever looks after you to say, can I do a blood clotting profile to see if this is okay? There's an easy treatment for that that can be done if the levels go up, that you might be admitted for that. But the important thing is it can be preventative. Lastly, I just want to give you a little bit of an insight into what PPE is. 
personal protective equipment and how do we wear them, what do we do with them and how do we look when we wear them. So a couple of essentials that is needed before I go into the hospital, a mask to walk to the hospital which I change with a separate one that I use in hospital, a pen that I only use to work in hospital and it stays in the car, some scrubs to wear during the work and take off before I get back into the car, put them in a separate bag and that bag gets um, taken home with the clothes that I'm wearing underneath the scrubs it gets put in the, into the washing machine straight away. Also separate shoes that I wear specifically only for the hospital and um, take them off before I get back into the car. And then lastly my permit that I need to be able to um, do this job. Oh, I forgot about the visors. The visor that I wear uh, to protect the patients and also to protect myself. I have an alcohol disinfectant close by so that I can uh, clean my hands whenever I come back from a hospital visit. Before I touch anything in the vehicle, I need to be able to clean my hands. Even if we hand over equipment, if we hand over pens, if we hand over documentation, hands are kept clean all the time so that nothing gets spread in the hospitals. The protocols in the hospitals are quite rigid and they're really good and that was one good thing with the lockdown is that now that the numbers are starting to surge uh, the hospitals are prepared protocols are worked out they've closed certain theaters to become theaters where only COVID patients get seen um, a lot of doctors have been shuffled around with their um, theater list to accommodate that so a lot have been done in our hospitals and our units and the healthcare workers um, are really looking at this very differently and they are very prepared for this we need to still keep the numbers as low as possible so that the healthcare system can deal with the situation and treat every patient as best as possible. So thank you for watching. If there's any questions, leave them in the comments if you want um, me to answer them. And also if you want a, a topic for a next video, some suggestions would be great. We can put that um, uh, on the list for the next videos. Leave in the comments. Um, share with as much as possible um, people that you know so that more can learn and not fear but know that we will overcome this uh, we're doing a great job and we should not fear we should do the right thing uh, stay home keep our social distancing avoid spreading it by wearing a mask in in public and um, we will look back at to this and know that we've grown as a nation and we've grown as a country thank you stay home stay healthy and stay safe